we are here to tell you about Re-AIM. This is about a summit that will take place in the Netherlands in February 15th and 16th, which is about the responsible use of artificial intelligence in the military domain. And it will be hosted by the government of the Netherlands. But let's familiarize ourselves with the concept. Let's just find out what artificial intelligence in the military is. Take a look at this. AI is fundamentally changing our world and our daily lives. Military organizations around the world are increasingly adopting AI in analyzing data and in decision-making processes. This military application of AI is essential for defending our global values. It is critical for the international community to look at both the opportunities and the risks. That is why we are organizing the Re-AIM Summit on Responsible AI in the Military Domain. Minister Hoekstra, let's start there. Why is the Netherlands so interested in this particular topic, so much so that you are hosting the Re-AIM Summit? Well, because on the one hand, we see the tremendous opportunity. We saw that in a short clip. You mentioned it as well. Uh, it could mean all sorts of, could have all sorts of positive effects on society. And it could also provide the military with equipment uh, and with things that we currently do not have and provide the military with opportunity. But I think, as always with a technology, uh, there is the opportunity, but there are also risks involved. And it is now up to us, it is up to this generation to make sure we mitigate the risks. Uh, we make sure we arrive at a common framework, uh, a common set of norms or rules, if you will, how to engage and how to, to deal with this uh, new technology. And the time truly is now, uh, because this is developing. Um, and we do need to act um, uh, because this will stay with us. Uh, this will not go away. This will affect society, but also defense ministries, the military for generations to come. From a military point of view, do we have a reason to be nervous? Is it a good thing? What does it mean? Um, both good thing and, and being nervous. I mean, let's just uh, start with the positive aspect. I mean, I think it's quite easy to understand, for example, in terms of a situational analysis, awareness and early warnings. If AI is applied, uh, you will have, you know, quite reliable data about uh, what you need to be worried about in military operations. However, there are a lot of question marks, uh, um, things that we should be worried about. Now, for example, can um, AI-enabled military systems um, make human-like decisions, um, that is to say, uh, in conformity with international law, especially international humanitarian law. Now, you know, in our society, we are supposed to distinguish civilians and military, civilian objects and military objects. Now, and, and human commanders always make the decisions to apply, you know, use force or not, in accordance with those internationally agreed norms. Can AI actually make those human-like decisions? There is a big question mark about that. What if AI is applied in, for example, nuclear weapons command and control systems? So that will probably increase uh, the risk factors of miscalculation, mistakes, and also unpredictability leading very quickly to potential sort of catastrophe uh, scenario. Okay, let's hear from the civilian and the academic uh, uh, realm. Let's just find out then what they have to say. A short video of the Hague Center for Strategic Studies and they are talking about their inputs and have a question for both of you. Let's hear. Because AI is such an all-purpose technology, regulating it through traditional arms control and non-proliferation regimes will be difficult. New approaches are necessary, including the development of norms and the involvement of new actors, including state and non-state actors. Could you outline three ways in which the UN can contribute effectively to developing these new norms and involving these key actors? You know, it's a bit of a cliché expression, but multi-stakeholder engagement um, actually feeding substance into intergovernmental discussions is really key. And we have been doing that um, in, for example, our discussions, multilateral discussions in cybersecurity issues, uh, also outer space, responsible behavior in outer space as well. Outer space, there are a lot of private entities that are now really uh, contributing to developments of those capabilities. So as the UN, we bring these actors 
um, so that they can actually feed a really serious substance into multilateral discussions. So that's one role that uh, we take very seriously at the United Nations. Mm. Minister Hoekstra, your thoughts then on that kind of stakeholder reassurance and stakeholder engagement? Uh, that is necessary. Um, AI will affect all of society. Um, and AI in the military domain uh, will not only involve governments, but will also involve civil society. And basically our people hopefully will not have to deal with war, but are, are um, uh, absolutely necessary at the table. Businesses are um, the companies providing the technology, uh, are typically two steps ahead of governments when it is about, new innova about innovations and new technologies. So bringing them together uh, uh, is, I think, the only alternative. And it will not be easy. Uh, let's also be very clear about that. It will not be easy, just as every discussion that we've had in the past about uh, limitations that we've put on, 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 on weapon systems, um, making sure that we safeguard uh, the civilian population against some of the adverse effects of war, have never been easy. And yet at the same time, if you look back at the past, uh, with two steps forward, one step back, we have succeeded in doing precisely that. And we should apply that now in the domain of AI. Okay, let's hear more from those stakeholder voices. Our second video is from uh, the TU Delft addressing their concerns about uh, artificial intelligence in the military. Let's hear. We often hear that technology is not good or bad. It is their use that makes them so. At Delft University of Technology, we disagree, especially for digital technologies. Technological design deeply influences how they can and will be used. And it is at the design stage that values, norms, and interests of actors can come through. Once a product has been developed, it is difficult to change the underlying values and for users and regulators to counterbalance the choices made during the design. This is especially important for the military domain where digital technologies can have a tremendous impact for better and for worse. Another big question for us is therefore, how do we ensure that regulations, development, and use of AI are set up in such a way that high-level principles such as meaningful human control and others are maintained and reinforced in the military practices. What is, I think, I think he was right. Uh, and, 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 and there the, uh, the, the, the common framework, the, 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 the common set of norms and regulations comes in. And that should not only apply for the application of AI, it, it should also apply to the design of AI, ideally. Because he is right, when you, when you have designed a system with certain limitations or certain possibilities, that actually predicts to a large extent the use of it. So we should look at the whole chain, if you will, and make sure that, you know, again, it will not be easy, but uh, going forward, we should agree on each and every element of AI in the military. Mm -hmm. All right, we mentioned earlier that there were stakeholders and that the minister was in that gathering with several representatives. Let's just hear a comment firstly from the ambassador representing Turkey and his name is Timur Solimas. And then we're also going to hear from the ambassador representing the United States, Bonnie Jenkins. Listen to what they had to say. We obviously have to be very careful about where it goes, where it leads, how it's used and how it's controlled. So this is important for us as a country that has a very strong uh, defense industry uh, as a country that is um, uh, invested in R&D, in defense industry in particular, and with uh, 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 looking to the future with AI, this is a conversation that's important for us. I really think there's real value in AI and how it can be used to help advance military operations. We also see the potential uh, downfall. So I'm really appreciative of the government of the Netherlands for launching this initiative. And I can say the United States looks very forward to being part of it and looking forward to February next year. You are nodding. You must be yes. very pleased that countries are starting to engage with this content. Absolutely. No, if the norm to be really implemented, we need to have good inclusive uh, process uh, so that uh, as many countries as possible will sign up to the norm and then implement them. And also the private sector businesses, etc., also buying into those norms um, of responsible behavior. We are also working with the young practitioners, AI practitioners, um, engineers, the business people, so they, that they will be more aware of the risks when they are actually designing those um, uh, algorithms and, and AI products in general. So the key is responsible 
uh, use. I don't want you to give up your diplomatic secrets, but you must be busy hard at work then lobbying those countries that are still not sure or that are concerned about being left behind because of their technical uh, uh, know-how or lack thereof, a lack of expertise. There's a lot of inequalities amongst countries. How are you planning to approach that? Well, actually, in the same way as we have done with conventional weapon systems and as we've tried to do, of course, with a much smaller scope in, uh, in, in, in the nuclear domain, I think the broader you can involve countries, the more success you, you will have. Um, but let's not be naive. This technology eventually will be available to, gov to governments and to militaries across the globe. And therefore, governments across the globe uh, should be involved. We, we shouldn't be naive. Uh, we uh, should really prepare for the what if. And given that AI will be there, uh, it is absolutely essential that we do the planning now. Uh, the good news is, you know, we're just starting with this. We're just starting to see the opportunities, but also the downsides. So we might have a bit of time, uh, but we should start now. Uh, we are responsible. Uh, we should do it for our generation, but also for the generations to come. Mm -hmm. Well, you've just been listening to really clear and bold ambitions expressed by the government in the Netherlands and the United Nations, of course, the build-up to re-aim 2023 in the Netherlands, 15th and 16th of February, has begun. Thank you for watching.